charts. And yet, in many respects, a whole lot of programs, particularly innovative programs, a lot of things are negotiable. I mean, if you can show that that, that isn't really working very well. Structures, team structures, for example, are a really good example where people get given these things. And despite the fact that they're completely dysfunctional, people work within them and don't, and don't say, well, this is not working and for these reasons. These are not. So challenge the norms and assumptions about why the, you know, the structure should be the way they are. Um, and bring some fresh logic. I mean, I agree with you. Um, but you go in and you see, you know, you can go into an organisation as an outsider. And because I sort of do short term work, I'm always walking in as the outsider. And you look around and you think, why on earth are they doing that? You know, this is completely dysfunctional. <laughs> and I, I tend to say that, you know, why on earth are you doing this? You know? um, and they say, but it works like this, you know, it's fine. Yes, the way we do it. Yes, the way we do it. <laughs> um, I mean, there was one organisation I worked for for a while, and I did make a change there, I have to say. I went on and on and on, um, <laughs> saying, why don't you have a central, um, a central record system? Everyone had their own little records, and if people came back for a service, no one ever knew. And it was just awful. <laughs> it was so basic. Uh, but I spent it took about six months for them to... <laughs> Well, yeah, this well, because they're built for resistance, you know. Right. Things are built for resistance. Yeah. That's right. We sort of, and the more people like you come in, the more they just put another piece of iron cladding around. Yeah. <laughs> they are built to resist. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, but so if you go on enough, they you can, you can break it down. <laughs> but, but I think it's important. You can, but also I think what you have to have is an alternative. You know, and oh, as yeah. you say, you have to have an alternative. You have to say, well, why don't we? Look at it this way, or let's try to think it that way, or something like that. But I think, in terms of your own, and I mean, it's, and it's your own work, not just other people's work as well. Yes. It's really useful sometimes to just strip it all away and say, well, what am I really doing here? You know, what is this really about? And try to bring some fresh, fresh logic to, to some of the thinking that you're doing. Because um, first principles thinking is used quite a bit now at really sort of high levels in policy because, uh, as I say, convention, the way we've always done it, has become so has become so rigid a barrier to get through a lot of time. Um, uh, try and think about things from, as I said before, never rely on one source. You know, you know, try and look at, um, never trust necessarily one figure, try and get it from a number of sources. If you, it's an old triangulation. If you do it three ways, you've got a much better chance um, of, um, of being sure that what you're, what you're finding is actually what's really happening. So, uh, so you know, it's, uh, it's sometimes tempting to sort of cut to the chase and think, right, I've done that, what the data, you know, off I go. But it's really important sometimes to look at that and say, what if I look for it? And sometimes just even generating some fresh data, not, not relying on the data sets of them saying, let's just do a little survey and see if the survey, you know, actually, actually supports what the data is saying. So some, sometimes some of the data data. Um, these are two questions that I ask all the time around programs, how and why. How is that going to happen and why? Or how, does the, how will that work and why will it work? Um, because the how and why is really important. And there's three critical points in favour in how and why. There's suitability. When you actually ask the how and why question, you realise what you're doing is actually not suit, it's not, it's not, it doesn't suit you to it. The suitability is just not there. Feasibility is just not there. It might be suitable, but you can't do it. You know, within the resources you've got and the and whatever the time, whatever you've got, maybe the greatest idea that's in, you know, whatever, but it's not feasible. And the other one, which you've often you get, is acceptability. Maybe a great idea, maybe whatever, but it isn't going to fly in this context. You know, it really isn't acceptable for various reasons. It might be politically unacceptable, and maybe a whole range. Now we we and we often balk at this one. I think. Some ways, but we say if you really are committed to getting something done, acceptability is something that you have to factor into those things. So it's suitability, feasibility, and acceptability. Put those three frames over anything, and you'll get a sense of where things can go to level. And as you say, um, there are many programs, brilliantly designed programs, that just are not feasible, and at the end of the day, um, would, would, not, would not be acceptable within whatever it is that they're 